I've never really considered myself a mad scientist, more like a crazy scientist. We've had a really crazy week around here at Mercedes Source, and it gets pretty exciting when we come up with some new inventions, and that's pretty much what we did this past week. We finalized a complete kit for setting the injection timing on these old Mercedes diesels. And it's pretty exciting because we went through a whole bunch of tests with different types of methods. And I believe I've come up with a method that is going to be able to be used by anyone to get really reliable and consistent and very precise results when setting the injection pump timing on these 1985 and older Mercedes Benzes. So along the way, working on this 240D, setting the injection pump timing, we ran into a real struggle and that was getting to the bolts on the injection pump, particularly the bottom bolt underneath because on the 115 chassis, you don't have a lot of room between the frame and the injection pump to work and there's a lot of hoses going through there. So it was kind of a pain. We just kept working, rolled the sleeves up, just kept trying and this is where we came up with one crazy invention. And I'm going to call this my snake wrench. <laughs> this is unbelievable. You know, even I cannot believe how well this works. After we started with all kinds of attempts at trying to get a wrench, that would snake its way down underneath that injection pump, snake its way to the rear bolt for that back brace and get to it to loosen it so you can rotate the pump. And that's what you have to do when you set the injection pump timing. You have to be able to loosen the pump and move it like you would a distributor, you know. So anyway, this is pretty exciting. We've actually gone into production today, right now in the shop. We've set up the jigs and we've started heating these wrenches. We had to get a very long, special, high quality 13 millimeter combination wrench to start with. And here you can see the process. And this is what we're doing here at Mercedes Source this week. We're making the snake wrenches. Now, when I filmed a training video on how to set the injection pump timing, it was very difficult in the engine compartment of this 240D to get the camera down there to get to show how this wrench worked. I mean, you couldn't, you can't even get to the bolts. You can't even see the bolts and trying to get a camera in there is just a lost cause. So what I did is I went back in the shop and pulled out a OM617 turbo diesel engine that's out of the car. So now let me show you how this wrench really works to get to those bolts. This is the injection pump on an OM617 turbo diesel engine. There's a triangular flange on the front of the IP pump which is held to the block by three nuts. You have one here, you have one right down underneath here, and then you have one on the inside between the cylinder head and the injection pump. Now getting to this one here isn't too difficult. Getting to the one inboard is a little more difficult and sometimes getting to this bottom one is a real pain. But let me tell you, getting to the, the back one, this brace bolt right here, can be the most difficult. So you can see using the snake wrench, getting on this one is not a big deal. You usually have uh, no problem, although on some engines you've got certain hoses here. So having this angle in this bend will allow you to choose. You could even come in and go like this, see, if you have a clearance problem with hoses uh, coming off the engine or whatever. You have a lift pump here and some other hoses that may get in the way. But getting on the lower one is where this wrench really shines. You can see that you can bring it all the way up here. See if we can get one more bite up. No, that's that's the bite there. And then of course you're going to loosen it, and you only have to loosen it maybe a half to three quarters of a turn. You want it about this loose when you go to adjust the pump back and forth. 
Getting on this bolt and loosening it and tightening it is about as difficult as filming it. Notice it's almost impossible to even see in a video scene. Note here you would have two oil cooler lines coming out. So trying to get a regular wrench in here and getting on the back of that nut, you can hardly see it. It's near impossible. But with this wrench, choosing this particular angle, I can go right between the oil cooler hoses and get on that bolt like that. See that? And if it doesn't catch there, I can lift it up, get right on it there, and then I can loosen it up. Because all you have to do is loosen that bolt up in order to adjust the pump. You don't have to take it all the way out. If you're having a problem getting in between the oil cooler hoses, you can flip the wrench over like this and go underneath right here. And if there's enough travel on that bolt, you can get on it, say, it's going to be tight. You may have to loosen this lower oil cooler hose and remove it a little bit so you can work the wrench in between. But depending upon where the bolt is, you might be able to work it from underneath. You'll probably have to get underneath the car to get access from this angle here. Okay, now I think you can see why I'm so excited about this wrench. Even after coming up with the bend, we decided to make another modification to the head to give it a little more clearance. I'm going to show this up close to you so you can kind of see the evolution and the final design of what I call Kent's snake wrench. As with most of the tools I design here in my shop, this tool went through an evolution. And if you saw my previous episode of Kent's Garage, that's episode number 13, I showed some of the early wrenches, the early attempts, I could say, at trying to get this wrench right here. So this is an evolution of about 10 different attempts at bending, twisting, and contorting a 13 millimeter combination wrench. But just today, we came up with the final modification, and that had to do right in here at the neck, just below the boxed end. When we've got it up in there, it would come up and hit. There's a metal plate on the back of the ejection pump where that rear bolt is for that back bracket. And so what we decided to do was just come in and grind off right there and straighten this out a little bit. So what this has done is it's narrowed this up this way and narrowed it up that way just enough so that's going to give us just a little bit more travel when we're getting to those really difficult nuts and bolts holding the injection pump to the engine. So if you're interested in purchasing... <laughs> Why not? Just buy it. <laughs> So if you're interested in purchasing this wrench, I put some links in the show more description of this video. I've also put a link down there taking you to our complete injection pump timing kit and some of the things that you will need to do this yourself. I've got some videos there on my website which will give you a sneak peek at how this kit works. And if you're interested in ordering it, I'll have all the links, everything you need right there in the show more below this video. There's a couple things I should point out right here, and that's how much time do you have between when the flow of the drip tube starts to slow down and when it starts dripping and stops dripping. You're only talking about three or four degrees there, okay? From, if you start at 65 and go all the way down to about 25, you're going to be getting a nice steady stream coming out of the drip tube. Just remember that as you're approaching two to three degrees before you expect to get the timing marks lined up, watch that drip tube very carefully. It's going to start slowing down the flow and it'll start running to the back of that capture tube. And then all of a sudden it'll start to drip real fast. And once it starts to drip real fast, you've only got about one to one and a half degrees before it's going to be dripping at one drip per second. Then immediately, within a half a degree after that, it's going to stop. So that's real important to know that when you do this the first time, otherwise you're going to be kind of like, what? What just happened? Okay. The other thing is I wanted to address this issue of injection pump timing recommendation as opposed to advancing it. Many people on these forums and on the internet say, oh yeah, you know, advance it a couple of degrees and you're going to get more power and your engine is going to run better. It has a lot to do with how worn out your engine is. If you have a lot of wear, in the sprockets, and you have a lot of wear in the chain, and you have a lot of wear 
in the injection pump, everything is kind of coming up behind the timing, so to speak. So if you have a really old engine, you might want to set it one or two degrees before the factory recommended marks. But if you have a, a solid, strong, you know, reasonably low mileage engine, you put it too far advanced, you're going to get excessive injector rattle or nailing. So just a word to the wise, I'm not going to say you can't play around with that. But keep in mind, it's not a cure-all if you're having engine power related issues. Always, after setting the injection pump timing, make sure your fuel injectors are firing at the right PSI because that does affect timing and also make sure they're spraying properly because if you spend all this time to set your injection pump timing and don't do anything with your worn out fuel injectors you're not going to get much improvement particularly as it relates to smoke and fuel economy together injection pump timing and injection release pressures and spray pattern can do amazing things to increase fuel economy and to lower engine smoke.